Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Figured today we'll go through an AKS-74U and all the different variants build guide and part explanation video. I went through and bought every direct attachment part you could buy for the AK-74U so we can discuss them and figure out which one's best to suit your needs. I also did a couple of builds for budget, ergo, and uh, recoil reduction so you can see those and the stats that goes along with them. But the goal of the video is so you guys can build the one that suits you best based on your budget and your needs for the mission you're trying to accomplish. So without further ado, we'll dive right into it. Okay guys, so here we've got every attachment that can directly attach to the various AKS-74Us. Uh, the U, the B, and the N, if you will. Uh, give me a sec here and we'll clean all this up and get it to something that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to look at. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the three different guns we have. There's three different variants of the AK-74U. And stat-wise, they are all exactly the same. There's nothing that differentiates between these three different guns that you need to worry about. So we'll look at these as a fact of which one is the cheapest to buy. And this isn't always consistent. It depends on what's in the market. So if we come in and type in AK-74U, AKS-74U, we look at the three different types they are, the 74U, the 74UB, and the 74UN. So the AK-74U, you can buy taken apart from mechanic with nothing on it for $15,000. The 74UB, market prices, say nineteen to 20000 today. And the UN, twenty four to 25000 Now the difference in these, simply put, is the fact of what people are buying the most and what's available. I'm honestly not sure why people would go buy a more expensive gun with the same stats. Uh, I'll leave that for you guys in the comments to tell me why you think it is. So the only other thing that's different about these three firearms is the side mount. So the 74UB and the 74UN have little side attachments right here for the side mounts. The regular AK-74U does not. And what that means is that all of these side attachments, not that guy, these four side attachments here will go on this, but not that. They'll go on the UB and the UN, but not the 74U. The same thing for the direct attached sights. All three are all four of these, as well as these two here, the scopes, they'll go here, but not there. So it'll go on that, but it's just because I don't have space. Makes it a four or a six block. And again there, so this guy here is a little bit different, kind of a goofy looking scope that goes on, but as well will attach to the side of the UN and the UB. One thing that is a common with all AK-74Us is the, the gas block. There is only one gas block that goes on all three of these firearms. So you look here, that's it. That's the only one that goes on there. So we'll throw all three of those on there right now. Next up is the RP-1. This is the charging handle that goes for all AKs. It gives you one ergonomics. As long as you have it unlocked with skier, pretty cheap thing to add one ergo to all your guns. So we'll throw that on there for all of them for now. The next thing up that's kind of weird is the dust cover. So there's two kinds of dust covers for each of these firearms. You've got the 6P26 SB7 and the AK-74UB. Now, there is no difference between these. The stats on them are identical. The only difference is the optics are a little bit different if you look on these. And the only explanation I can find for that, not ever having fired this firearm personally, is that it says here, with a dovetail scope mount, a sound suppressor device, and special sights designed for firing subsonic ammunition. So because the gun can fire subsonic ammunition, the 74UB here, you're gonna need a little bit more of a kick up for your sights because the dr bullet drops vastly increased for subsonic ammunition versus non-subsonic ammunition, standard ammunition, if you will. That's the only difference between these other than the price. This dust cover, pretty cheap, 1270 from proper, F Fence even has it, somebody sold to it, and then the one person selling on a flea market for 4,000. But the UB actually is a lot more expensive for whatever reason, and there is no advantage to running it. In fact, in some ways, there's a disadvantage, and we'll get to that later. So we're going to take the standard dust cover, and we're going to put it on all three of these and move that guy out of the way. Next up, we'll talk muzzle devices, and we'll go through the compensators first. So I have these ordered from lowest recoil reduction to highest recoil reduction, with a varying of stats in between. So as you can see, these three are pretty much all identical. These are your kind of standard AK 
compensators that can actually go on the AK-74 as well as a couple other firearms. They all give you 5% and plus 0.5 muzzle velocity. Next up is the DTK-1, pretty good compensator, negative seven recoil and an increase to muzzle velocity. The SRVV is eight recoil, but negative one ergonomics and 0.5 muzzle velocity. And then the biggest one is the negative 11% recoil, um, negative one ergonomics and 0.5 muzzle velocity with the PWS CQB. So I'll leave that to your choice, what you want to do if you want to spend the money and buy the CQB, which costs upwards, if you got it unlocked, 15000 but you're talking twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 to buy it off the flea market, whereas the DTK1, four to 8000 depending on when you unlock it. Next up, we'll talk suppressors. And there is some intricacies with these suppressors with the handguards, but I'll discuss that when we get to that point. So I have these ordered based on their uh, recoil reduction as well. So the lowest recoil reduction... Um, is this TPGA, it gives you negative one, but it also hits accuracy and ergonomics pretty good, increases mu muzzle velocity slightly. The hexagon, kind of same deal, three recoil, but 10 ergonomics. The hybrid 46, which is an okay suppressor, but definitely not for the price that this sells for. This is a very expensive suppressor. And then lastly, the PBS4, which is pretty much if you're gonna be running a suppressor, this is probably what you should run on your AK-74, it's negative six recoil, 14 ergo, um, with a small hit to accuracy and an increase to muzzle velocity. All of these are available on all three firearms. There is no differentiating between how they go on. Well, this one needs the mount, um, but they will all, all of these will attach to all three AK-74Us. So next up is the side mounts, and we're gonna break these up into two different groups. So the P-LAD and the Cobra can go on both of these firearms, no big deal. You can see they attach right to the side. They work pretty good. However, these other two will attach the AKS-74U, but they will not do it with the dust cover. As you can see here, they will not attach. You actually have to pull the dust cover off because they are so low. They won't attach at the same time. So for all intents and purposes, you probably won't use these two because you're going to take that five hit to ergo by not having the dust cover attached. And then lastly, we have the B-18. This little sight mount attaches to the, the dust cover up on top where the sights are. You can see right here. And that allows you to attach a sight pretty effectively to the AKS-74U. Now, the diff this is the big difference between the two dust covers is this will not go on the 674UB. Another reason to never even consider this dust cover is it just hampers your ability to modify the gun even more. If your firearm comes with this, there's no reason to change it other than the fact that maybe you can sell it if it's found in raid but I'll never use this. I'll never go out and buy it just because the cost, full, the cost difference is ridiculous. So next up is the side mounted sights. Say that three times fast. Uh, for the most part, all these will attach. The PSO will not with the dust cover. It's just like these two side mounts, but all of the rest of these will attach directly to the gun. Let me move this so we can do it. So you've got your, uh, your night sight, which is absolutely huge and ridiculous on the side of the AK-74U as well as your OK, OKP-7, your EKP-8 will both go on, your USP-1, and the uh, 1P-59 mount, which is, allows you to put this scope on, which is kind of like having the PSO, but it'll actually go with the dust cover. So the only way to actually get the dust cover, or I'm sorry, the PSO sights, series of sights onto this, is by taking that dust cover off, and boom, it'll go on there. But again, there's a five ergo hit, so I'm not sure why you would ever do that with your other options available. After the sight attached sights is the handguards. Now this is the first place you can kind of get complicated. You have your standard wood handguard, obviously goes on all three. It's got your base stats of four, ergo. Then you have the B11 and the Golov. So the Golov is, is the same as the B11 with stats as you can see, but it has an effect on what you can put on the muzzle as well as how many attachments points. You can see you have many more rails and attachments points than you do the B11. And then you have the AXRSU 47SU, which is a rat tool. As you can see here, I keep one of my gamma as well. Um, allows you to attach a lot of attachments uh, m just as much to the firearm as the others, if not more. So this attaches on here and gives you a back rail, a front rail, your two side rails, and your bottom rail. The Golov does the same essentially, but out way out in front of the gun. And as you can see, the muzzle is way recessed. So this is where your limitation comes in. And then your B11, we'll put on this one, is your simple uh, handguard mount. Also used for one of the 
mechanic tasks for the gunsmith task line. So after you put all of these on here, as far as the uh, XRS is concerned and the B11, you can put any of the barrel attachments that you want on these. All of the suppressors, everything will go on there. So we'll put that on there and that on there, for example. The AK-74UB has a problem though, because it's recessed, you can't put some of the bigger suppressors on there. So you're limited to, um, not only are you cannot put compensators on this with that attachment, you're limited in what you can actually attach to this. The only thing that can actually attach is this one compensator, the 6B26. And I guess it's because it just barely sticks out the end for some reason. It'll attach to the handguard as well as the TPG or TGP will attach. And the hybrid 46 will attach, which is very expensive. Again, as I said, that's a ridiculous cost for a AK 74 U. Now, your PBS-4 will not attach. That's one problem with this handguard is it will not go on there as that. You're basically limited to the TGP for suppressors when you're trying to build an AK-74U because personally, there's no reason to spend the money when you're running this gun. It's not that good of a gun. You're using it for budget for the one task line or maybe for close quarters. I wouldn't spend 100K. You're almost spending more than the rest of the gun is worth just for the suppressor. So for argument's sake, we'll put the suppressor back on the front of this guy. So we're suppressed. We'll move the rest of these out of the way because we're kind of done talking about them. Uh, we're not going to use uh, side mount, personal preference. We'll get all these out of the way. And we've already talked about the sights. So we'll leave them out of the equation for the time being. One thing that I do want to note real quick, though, is that the B18 will still go on all three of these. So for example, this guy here gives you almost a full top rail of choices, three places to put a sight if you so desired. Next up is the grips, the pistol grips that you can put on. I have these ordered from lowest ergonomics to highest ergonomics. I'll leave you to decide what your budget suits, but you can go everything from plus 13 down to plus five and just about every number in between. You know, plus nine, plus seven, 10, and 13, 12, and 11, they're all there. So for sake of the, the this, we'll put the RK3 on. It's one of the most common grips. It's very expensive. But the, and then the others, we will add just the next one down the sequence here. So there's your three AK-74Us. Now it's functional firearms. Again, this is personal preference in your budget. The ergo hit isn't a huge deal with this gun. Next up is your stocks. So you have three options here. The standard stock that comes on this thing and a butt pad if you want to, because they're pretty cheap. Or you put a PT lock, and let me buy another one of these real quick. So you put the PT on here, and that allows you to attach these other two stocks. The PT3 and the PT1. So those are your three stock combos you can put on any, any individual AK-74U. And now we actually have the beginnings of what looks like a, a real firearm. The next piece we're going to talk about this is the magazines. And you have everything under the world to talk about. I didn't grab one. There's the black 6L20 mag that I didn't grab, but it's the stats are the same. So you have the standard 10 round. You have your 230s that are just your basic uh, plum, tan, or black. And then you also have the next one up is the AK-12 and compatibles. This guy is kind of a higher... Um, reload and check speed but has a and a less hit to uh, ergonomics then you have the p mag which is just a low ergonomics but doesn't have any bonuses then you go to your big 45 round uh mag it's, i've never personally used it other than a scav you have your next one which is basically the same stats just looks different then you have your 6l31 which is your 60 round mag that you see most people running and lastly you have your rpk mag 95 rounder that will fit on the AK-74. It looks funny as hell, but it does fit. So the next thing up is kind of grips. Um, your standard grip choices exist. You know, you can go all over the board with these from higher go to high recoil reduction to somewhere in the middle. Um, it's all available. So that's personal preference and all of them will attach to all three firearms. They give you a setup similar to all three of these here. Um, again, it's personal preference and what you're aiming, but most standard grips will fit all four of the or all three of these firearms. 
And then lastly, sites. I just kind of wanted to show you the various options you had with sites as far as a smaller one. So with the B18 on here, like I said, you have um, a couple of different places you can actually attach this. It goes right on the B18. Um, and then there's two places on the XR74 that'll go. It'll go all the way up front if you so desire to put it up there, and it'll go all the way back here if you want to put it back there. And that exists for most of these compact sites. If you want to put a bigger site on, for example, like let's go grab a, a PSO site, it will attach it will attach to the XRSU pretty good um, without anything else. And this is kind of standard for your hammers and all your other sites. It won't attach to those unless you put it on one of your mounts. So you can put this on there and then put this guy on and you'll have a site. One thing to mention though, is the XR7U will not allow you to attach uh, your side mounts and you wouldn't want to anyways, you already have the mounting device. Um, so if you do throw the XR7U on, you will not be able to throw side attached sights, uh, scopes, anything like that on there. You're limited to what you can attach to this. And then lastly, we have the ammo. Now I have these ordered from lowest penetration to highest. Uh, you can see the chart, it shows you specifically what to use. The top end of the spectrum, you have your 7N3N. It doesn't do the most damage, but it gets through tier six armor. You have your standard ammo, which you start the uh, your character off with, which is BP. Um, next up is BT followed by BS. Some of these other ammos are viable, but only if you're gonna leg meta or you're shooting at somebody under geared. You see a lot of people run PRS ammo, and while it is a junk ammo for armor, it does have a higher flush damage than some of the others. Uh, but again, if you're looking for budget ammo, you're better off going with PP um, or BP at the end of the day. Okay, as a little top note to this, I did three builds here. One for budget, one for ergo, and one for recoil. So I'll kind of show you the cost differences of these three. So first off, we'll start with the budget. Uh, what it costs to build that. If you buy all the parts for it. So not including the gun. So you're all in at 42951 to build the budget AK-74U, not including the firearm. Uh, you can go with the U, the UB, or the UN, your choice. Next up, we'll do the 74U Max Ergo. We'll assemble it. Buy parts. Again, not in we'll get rid of traders and not include the firearm. You are at 133,176, but that's 30,000 for the PK06. So we'll cross that out, take that out of the equation. Um, Cause you can kind of go with a couple of different sites that are much cheaper. You're 103,176. And then lastly, we'll go with the 74U min recoil. Symbol it, select, buy parts, take the gun and the PK-06 out. So you're 126 to 21 to buy all the parts. You can go with a little tactical device if you want to. Um, it's not gonna change the price that much though. It gives you a pretty good idea what it costs to actually build this. So those are three firearms right there. Let's go shoot them and see how different they are. We'll start off with the uh, AK-74U budget and go from there. So we'll go full auto, mid-range, no recoil control. Pretty crazy. Let's try that again with actually trying to control it. So doable at close range. And at far range. A little bit harder to shoot. Next, we'll try the minimum recoil. Again, close range. Make sure the laser's on, right? Yep. Oops, didn't go full auto. No recoil control. We'll reset here. Come on. We'll go with actually trying to control it. A 
And we'll shoot at the far one. I remembered this time. A little bit easier to put your target, your shots on target there. And lastly, we'll go with the Max Ergo. Make sure we're on full auto. Lasers on. And we'll shoot at the far one now. So with the Max Ergo, you can see how fast you pull up versus the minimum recoil. How fast you pull up. Then we'll compare the budget versus the min or the max ergo now. So here's the max ergo speed and your budget speed. Not much of a difference. So there's all three of the firearms kind of at their max configurations, whether you want cheapest, lowest recoil, or highest ergonomics. Um, obviously, there's several ways you can tweak those from there, get them a little bit cheaper, or uh, tweak the ergo and the recoil a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys examples and kind of show you, in my opinion, how little of a difference there is between the three. You can actually build a budget AK-74U for the task and not have to spend a bunch of money doing it and still have a gun that's halfway decent at killing people. So that pretty much concludes the video there. I hope you guys found this helpful and got a lot out of it. Um, I enjoyed making it. It's fun going through and diving through all the parts of these uh, different firearms and learning what all you can do with them. If you think I missed anything or you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below or come find me on Twitch when I'm streaming and I'll be more than happy to dig into the details for you right there live. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a bunch, uh, especially with the YouTube algorithm and helping me grow and get this video out to other people. And with all that being said, I hope you guys are having fun in Tarkov. We'll see you out there.